Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you are not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. Hey guys, today is Saturday, March 11th and the energies in the day adds up and reduce the number three vibration. If today is your birthday, happy birthday. So when it comes to the energies within today, Ooh, nice. I like this. Okay. So the Phoenix energy is what's coming up as a spirit animal. So what I'm getting with the Phoenix energy is to get up, is to rise up out of your situation, is to not allow anything to confine you or define you, is to remember that everything is happening for you, regardless of what it may seem, is to remember that like nothing ever ends. It's like when I think of the Phoenix energy, I'm thinking about say Plutarian energy and transmutation. It's like energy never dies. It just morphs into something that's like minded frequency. It's like, I think of say how the pharmaceutical industry, like not pharmaceutical, but the nicotine industry, when it was too obvious that nicotine was causing people's lives instead of you know that big ball of energy that's moving instead of just crushing and dying it just shift into the pharmaceutical energy and when i think of say the the nicotine the frequency of the nicotine industry and the pharmaceutical industry they're very similar if you if you think about it like you know those of you who like to dive deep and think and i feel like that's most of us here like think about the similarities between those two industries and the marketing and how marketing was used as fact you know where doctors smoked and they encouraged their patients to smoke and they even started creating apple flavored cigarettes for children. So there were cigarettes for pregnant, any issue you had, a cigarette would have solved it. And of course they made it seem like the science said, but really it was marketing. Marketing is what made things seem like a fact. And that's why to me, facts are collective agreements because you know, when it comes to say even scientific studies, certain formulas will help you to get to a certain conclusion. But you could, but, but those formulas are like, you know, someone's steps to get you there. You know what I mean? And those, those formulas will get you there. But then what if you were to try a different formula, you're going to end up somewhere else. And to me, that's the thing about life. It's like, there's so much different possibilities when it comes to everything. There's no set in stone way when it comes to anything. So it's important that we remember that as we move through the day, because with the day being the 11th and, you know, we're in the month of March and the sun and Mercury is in Pisces. I think of how we can easily get frustrated, how we can easily get angered and annoyed. And then before we know it, um, the day passes us by because you know, one thing, something stirred up our emotions, something probably egoic, us wanting to be right or someone wanting to be right. And there being a battle of the egos and people are being childish and immature and not trying to understand where each other is coming from, but more than anything, just trying to be right. Like, of course, when that happens, like, you know, we crash and burn. When I think about the Phoenix energy, it just brings me to the importance of like getting up like getting up, not allowing something to define you, 
define you, not allowing something to control you, not allowing something to have power over you. I feel like, not feel like, my biggest lessons come through other people. Like I remember one point, I would want to just avoid people and keep to myself. And yes, I am someone who likes my alone time. I'm very introspective and I love my time alone because that's how I recharge. Because being able to pick up on other people's energies whenever I'm around people for too long or too many people, it's almost like their energy, uh, it's almost like I'm consumed with everything about them to where I get lost in them because all I can feel is them. And when I'm by myself, it's like I can finally feel me again, which feels like nothing where everybody else has their own fragrance. It's like everybody has their own energetic fragrance. So to me, being around others is like I'm smelling all these different fragrance all day where when I'm by myself, I'll smell nothing. It's like how we can't see ourselves without a mirror in front of us. So my frequency, it will, you know, to someone else, it might, you know, they might have a, a, a description for my energetic fragrance. But for me, it just feels like nothingness. So yes, I like my time alone. It's very important. But at the same time, I challenge myself to be in the presence of others because I know, I, I can tell how much I've grown based on how I deal with others based on what I'm taking personal, what I'm taking as an attack, opposed to just realizing that everybody is trying to figure it out. Everybody is trying to do the best they can, even when it doesn't seem like it. And nothing is personal, even when it is. So my interactions with people I'll use as a game to show like how much I'm progressing, where maybe before I was here and when I'm around, say, certain kind of people, you know, I would get triggered or frustrated and annoyed where now I could be around certain kind of people and just know that that's just them and it's okay for them to be them and know that, you know, what I might find annoying about them, others might find certain things or the same things annoyed with me. So it's like, I'm like, wow, normally in this kind of situation, I would behave like this, but now like I'm totally unbothered and mean, and, and when I say unbothered, I mean genuinely unbothered and not pretending to be unbothered. And to me, genuinely unbothered, meaning that, you know, it's not personal. Other people's behavior and action is not personal. And then it comes back to me. I get to decide what I will allow from what I won't allow. And, at the, and it's also a lesson with me because whenever I notice patterns with people, meaning that I experience the same thing with more than one person, if I experience the same thing with more than one person, I know it has everything to do with me. Meaning there's something about the way how I'm showing up. There's something about the way how I'm showing up, something about the way how I'm communicating, like not saying, oh, it's my, like, I deserve any negative experiences that I get, or you deserve anything negative, any negative experiences. But the way how I see myself is through patterns. So if I have the same, the same kind of experience from more than one person, I know that is something about the way I'm showing up. And it could be as simple as me not showing up with proper boundaries or me not showing up and communicating and expressing myself in a more direct and assertive and clear way. It could be me wanting to be diplomatic and in the process of me being diplomatic, I'm not fully speaking my truth and instead I'm saying what the other person wants to hear. So they're content because they've heard what they wanted to hear. But at the same time, I don't fully feel heard because I didn't fully express myself and communicate the way I should. I just glimpsed over and looked at the chart and the moon is in is Scorpio. So with the Phoenix energy, moon and Scorpio, it's so fitting because Scorpio energy brings moon and Scorpio energy to me is shadow work time. It's shadow work time because when the moon is here, for some of us, this is where we have to be honest about how we really feel when it comes to certain things, how we, you know, you know, certain limiting beliefs we might hold when it comes to ourselves, our financial situations, different things in our lives. And the Phoenix energy is where we rise. We rise because we realize that things are just trying to help us to understand ourselves on a deeper level. And there's never any reason or justification for us to beat ourselves up, punish ourselves, or speak to ourselves in a nasty 
or negative way. It is extremely important that you speak to yourself always with respect and kindness. Like it's so important because you are the most powerful person that you know, and only you can create your reality. And how can you create your reality if you're on the inside talking crap to yourself, beating yourself up? Like if ever and whenever, and it took me time to catch myself to, to where, you know, it's now a habit to speak to myself nicely. And when I make a mistake or speak to myself kindly and lovingly, and whenever I make a mistake, I'll say to myself, like Dr. Maya Angelou say, when you know better, you do better. Because if I truly knew better, I would have done better. So when you make a mistake, know that if you knew better, you would have done better. But what you have to do when you make a mistake is acknowledge the mistake you have made. Make sure you gain all the lessons from it. Because if you gain all the lessons from it, then instead of a mistake, it was a teaching opportunity. It was a teaching moment. The universe helped you to understand something on a deeper level. So for me, learning from it, then I get to move forward, more freedom, more happiness, because this thing shouldn't happen again, because I've learned. And if it happens again, it means that I fully, there's a lot, there's something that I didn't understand that I didn't learn. So always speak to yourself nicely, always speak to yourself kindly. And I love how the moon is positively aspecting Mercury, the sun and the sun conjunct Mercury and Pisces. And that brings me to say the inner world is connected. The moon is the inner world. So the inner world is connected to different realms, realities. This is where we could find ourselves having downloads. And for me, a download could happen as simple as me sitting there watching something on YouTube, you know, watching the TV and watching YouTube on the TV. And while I'm watching something, all of a sudden I can witness myself kind of checking out from what I'm watching and then thought processes start pouring in. Thought processes just start pouring in while I think I'm watching something. I find that a lot of my downloads will happen while I'm in the midst of something. So say while I'm in the midst of working with my hands, working with my hands will bring me to a meditative state because as I'm touching and feeling, my mind is out, is not thinking, it's observing what it is that I'm experiencing. So while my mind is like observing being a witness there's no thinking happening my mind becomes a clear channel and then thoughts coming no one's coming understanding standing comes in questions that i need answers to just are answered you know or you're watching something or you're walking and you heard something and it triggered something for you it's like you heard something and it feels like that one part of what you heard just feels louder than everything else that was said to me, that's like a channeling moment where the universe is guiding you. Divine guidance is coming through. So yeah, the moon is positively aspecting Mercury and sun conjunct each other in Pisces energy, which is very psychic and intuitive like Scorpio energy, both watery energy. And when I think of water, I think of say intuition, premonition and the day is Saturnian energy. Saturn rules the day and Saturn is in Pisces. So with Saturn being the ruler of the day and recently transited into the sign of Pisces, like Saturn is forcing us to say with Pisces energy and I have my moon in the 12th house, Everything means something for me to the point where I could get lost in all these symbolisms around me to the point that I procrastinate, which mean not even procrastinate, freeze in place because everything means something to the point where I don't know what anything means, meaning, okay, if this means this and that means that and that means that and that means that, like, what do I do now? It's like that kind of vibe. And to me, some of the blessings of Saturn energy and Pisces creates more structure and order and system and structure and system could be good once we have clarity and determination to go after something because Pisces will help us to dream the dream because a dream is a blueprint to reality. So Pisces will help us to have that visualization, that clear image in our mind. And then Saturn energy is that structure, that system that's also necessary in order to take a dream from the mind and into tangible experience. So the moon positively aspects Saturn and in Pisces. So with the moon position, yes, there might be some uh, emotional flare ups here and there. 
And with the day being a Saturn rule day, we might feel <clears throat> a bit restricted in a way. <clears throat> feel a bit restricted in a way because Saturn deals with time. And <clears throat> with Saturn being an energy that deals with time, we can feel like either time is moving too fast on this day <clears throat> or that we don't have enough time when it comes to this day or even dealing with some kind of uh, some kind of an authority when it comes to say the energies within the day. <clears throat> the card associated with the day is the six of pentacles and you guys for the last three days it's nothing but pentacle energy which brings me to say tangible tangible things whether it's finances or just like you know physical experiences <clears throat> and with the six of pentacles in the reversal position this brings me to say an imbalance when it comes to giving an imbalance when it comes to responsibility this is where we can find ourselves taking on way too much i think of say the personality of the day which is the number 11 energy it's that artistic genius energy this is where we have so much ambitious ideas when i think of the path of the day the day adding up and reducing to the number three vibration this is where we're curious and creative and we're trying everything and anything to the point where nothing gets done on a day like this it's so easy to find yourself like like all over the place as far as energy wise had so much plans and intentions to do so much but got lost in the fantasy and the imagination of your own mind to the point where the day is kind of blown off so when it comes to the energies in the day to me it's good to like to travel light when i say travel light meaning as far as how much you put on your plate and expectations that you have for yourself like be really patient with yourself today because it's so easy to have all these plans and then things just not follow through as you would like them to the moon is squaring pluto in capricorn at 29 degrees so our inner world feels restricted when it comes to certain change and transformations happening with our goals and responsibility the moon is opposed by uranus and taurus so our inner world also feels like a push and pull when it comes to freedom and stability because uranian energy is a freedom oriented energy is revolutionary it's innovative but the moon in scorpio is fixed because it wants to feel safe it wants to feel stable so it's like there's no newness when it comes to our comfort zone so when i look at those aspects being made to the moon the challenging aspects i think about how we can put ourselves in a position where yes we're safe but nothing good happens there because we're so guarded and protected it brings me to say me at home and how i'll need to open up my blinds so that all my plants can get the lighting that they need and i can also enjoy the beautiful view but in order for me to open up the view to see out that allows other people to see in and sometimes that frustrates me and annoys me because i like to feel in control of my space and to have other people walking in and just staring in you know it feels like a violation but at the same time it is just a sacrifice that i have to make so when it comes to say the energies within today i think of the sacrifice of us taking action in order to achieve what it is that we want us being okay with failing in order to keep failing and getting up with the phoenix energy until we get to uh until we get to wherever it is that we're trying to go i feel like there's something about communication also today something about communication and there needs to be clarity around communication there needs to be directness when it comes to communication and how easy it is for there to be misunderstandings when it comes to communication today but yeah when it comes to responsibility you know don't bite off more than you can chew don't take on more than you can handle and Juno enters into Taurus today. Juno is an android, is an android. Juno is an asteroid that talks about, say, what keeps us in a committed and long term anything. So when you think of Jupiter and Venus, Jupiterian and Venus energy would show what attracts us, you know, where we meet a person, depending on the house that they're in. But, you know, what attracts us based on the values that we hold? 
based based on you know the amount of attention and focus that we place on a thing but juno is what keeps us for the long haul so with juno and taurus we're going to be reflecting on the tangible the physical the stability in a thing as far as whether we should commit to it or not for the long haul so when i think of juno and taurus to me this is where a person might say okay let me give a better example so we have venus we have Venus in we have Venus in Aries and Jupiter in Aries. So with Venus and Jupiter in Aries, what might attract you to a thing is the level of competitiveness to it. You know, competition could feel fun because it's, there's almost like a point of reference when in a competition where you're able to see where you are where you were opposed to where you are now. Like Venus and Jupiter in Aries could be you're attracted to a person because you like the fact that they're action oriented you like their aggressive nature their fiery nature because aries energy is a, an aggressive energy it's fiery it's a warrior type energy it's also an entrepreneurial type of energy because an entrepreneurship is risk taking and no one can teach you how to be a risk taker it just has to be in you so you know when i look at say being attracted to, to someone who has that aggression that aries energy that warrior energy that fighting energy that childlike energy that competitive energy but like what will keep you with juno and taurus what will keep you so everything aries i mentioned is what will attract you to the person what will intrigue you intrigue you based on your values and things but with juno and taurus what will keep you is the fact that they're stable what will keep you is the fact that they're consistent. What will keep you is the fact that they dress nice, they, they like nice things, they carry themselves well, they appreciate beauty. What will keep you is that they're traditional. You relate to the traditionals that they value, that they hold near and dear. You know, what will keep you is that they are very sensual. You know what I mean? And, and it doesn't even have to be relationship wise with Jupiter and Venus energy. It could be say what attracts you to a job, what attracts you to a career path is that it allows you to be competitive because competition is motivating to you. What attracts you to a career path, you know, with Aries energy, Venus and Aries, Jupiter and Aries is the fact that you get to be the star of the show because Aries energy is ambassador energy. So what might attract you to something is that you get to be the model, you get to be the actor, you get to be the dancer. It's like you are the leading person in that thing. But what keeps you there with Juno and Taurus is the fact that it's a stable position. It's a traditional thing. It's something that will go on forever. It's something that is educating people because Taurus is an educating energy. So yeah, when it comes to Juno energy is what will keep you in whatever it is that you're attracted to. So with Juno moving into Taurus and while it's there, we will be reflecting on say the tangible Taurus type things about what keeps us in everything that we do. So you guys, such a pleasure as usual. If you'd like to book a reading with me or check out my exclusive contents only on Patreon, the links for that is in the description box below. Let me know you're here with me by dropping me a yellow heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.